Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this DeLonghi Nespresso Original uh, Machine. It's called the Latissimo Plus. Now this do, does Nespresso's original line of, of pods. And that's, this is what they look like. Now don't get confused, Nespresso also has a other type of pod, Vertio line, and they look like this. And you might have a machine like this, but they are much bigger and rounder. That's the newer version. This is their older line. They still make them. It's a little less expensive to get these pods. But this is the DeLonghi machine, um, and it's got a milk frother. This is a really nice feature. It's got four. It's got basically two settings, um, a small and a large, but they call it a Lungo, which is the big. And the espresso is the smaller one. That's what those buttons look like. And we got this handle. This is where we put the pods. The froth milk comes out here. I'm going to show you all this. This thing works really well. It takes up a really small footprint. It's got a removable water reservoir on the back. They say to lift it up by the lid. I don't necessarily agree with that. But it does come off. Just had to use two hands but yeah it does come off you can fill it up and then you can put it back on i like to use a, like something else to fill it up with the cord does wrap up on the bottom of the machine and then you just plug it into 110 you know just a standard two plug outlet let's go over dimensions real quick so front to back about 12 inches side to sides about six and this thing's not very tall Maybe about 11, but with the handle up, you know, you might need, um, you might, might need about 14. So I'm going to do several videos on the, this machine. It's actually quite complicated. This first video is just going to be like a detailed review, kind of an overview of it. We're going to make a latte and a cappuccino, but there's also some settings you can adjust. And I'll go over those. I'm also going to descale this thing with some descaling solution. That'll be another video. So let's start up. It's got this milk frother. Now this is a really nice feature. We lift this lid off and we pour our milk in there. You can use 2% whole milk, skim milk, soy milk. It does it all, but it's going to froth it with some, some steam. And then it's got, you can, if you're not going to be using it, you slide this little lever over, but we're going to be leaving it on. So this has got this little thing here that's going to plug in. So that's really nice. It's got a max line. You fill it up to about here. This is where the, like the coffee, the, the espresso is going to come out. Like I said, you lift the handle. That's where the pod goes. And we're going to close it. When you close it, you're kind of puncturing the pod. So it is a little a little hard to close, but not too bad. And again, you can adjust the froth, where the froth's going to come out. Up here, you can turn this if you want more froth or less froth. And you turn it to this position if you want to take it out. And then when you're supposed to do a clean after every time. You um, run milk through this nozzle. You do a clean. I'll show you how to do that. So we're just going to put fresh water back here. This is the power switch. So when you turn it on, these lights come on. So these machines are kind of expensive, the newer ones. This is an older one but it looks almost identical to the newer one out that's about $500. But I picked this one up on Facebook Marketplace for about $70. And it seems like it works pretty good. Okay, so let's go back to the, these are the Nespresso pods. This is the original line. These pods are not very big. You know, about inch and a half, about inch and a quarter. I bought some Starbucks. Now, they, you, you can find quite a bit of different uh, variety but the main thing you're going to want to see is what did they design this pod so this pod was designed for the espresso shot which is that small button 
So when I put that pod in, I'm going to want to put, I'm going to click that button for the small one, or if I want it with, with, with milk. So if you want just the cappuccino side or the, the espresso side, like the coffee side, you're going to press these buttons. If I press these buttons, it's going to do the, the Lungo, which is the bigger coffee shot and the frothing side. It's going to do it automatically. It's going to do the, the milk first and then the espresso shot. And same over here. This is the smaller one. This is like the cappuccino one. This would be similar to a latte one. So back to the pod. So I've got this house blend. And on the side of it, it's, it's got the little Lungo. So they want you to brew this pod on the Lungo setting, which is the bigger setting. So this, they look, they look identical. They just must have made the coffee grounds in diff different inside it or something. But that's what you got. You got to... Look at the box directions on where they want you to brew. Now, could I brew an espresso shot through this one? Sure. I could do the smaller setting on this one. And I could do I could do the bigger setting on this one. I could do the Lungo on this one. But this is kind of how they, they designed this for the espresso shot. There is another one, this Rosterio. This machine doesn't have it. This machine only has the espresso, which is, I call it the small, and the Lungo, which is the big. That's what this machine has. So here I've got two pods that I've already done. And so this is this is how the pod looks when you've ran the water through it. It's gonna it's gonna pierce this side. See how that side looks when it's before. And then it's gonna pierce this side. Now it injects the hot water here and it comes out here. Your coffee or espresso shot comes out here. So I've got this pod. This is what it looks like. It's got really, really fine coffee grounds in there. Really, really, they're really packed, compacted inside these pods. I've taken these pods apart. They're very intricate and they're all metal. Now inside you do have a little bit of a filter down there on the side that get, gets pierced. And then again, this was the side of where the shot comes out. These are recyclable. Um, there's like a some manufacturers offer a mail-in so you you let these sit kind of dry out and then you mail these in to be recycled so i'm going to do let's do an espresso shot first i'm going to grab this one you simply just lift the handle up you place it in there it kind of stays and then when you you pull the handle down it's going to kind of arrange it and do all the piercing all at one motion now like I said, this is the espresso. This is the small button. It, this side, these two buttons are just for this. It will only do the coffee side, but these two buttons will do the milk side and then the coffee side. So right now I just want to show you. So this is just do an espresso. Now the machine is kind of loud. That was some of the complaints on the uh, forums. So it's relatively quick. Again, that's only 1.35 ounces. And it's brewed at, you know, they tried to get up 250, but they're just not running enough water through there. So there's about 150. Okay, good. They do get it up to 150. One thing I've noticed, this thing does drip for a while. And it does have a tray. I could, I should have pulled the tray out. So that tray would have worked better for the espresso. It gets it up closer and you don't get as many splashes. So these brew the espresso shot, you know, it, it's, you're trying, I think they're trying to get more and more of how it actually is supposed to be brewed because these definitely look different than like a K cup or something. And it's definitely tasting a lot better. You know, you're getting some more of that, that creamy coffee along with the espresso shot, which you normally don't get with other um, espresso machines I've found. But that's a really, really strong concentrated uh, coffee. Okay, so now we're done with that. We just lift the handle. And what's going to happen is that pod's going to drop down into a storage area. So there's a storage container that holds the pods, which is kind of nice. And then it's ready for the next pod. So let's go ahead and do the Lungo. This is a Lungo pod. We just put it in there. We close this all in one motion. And we're going to press 
the Lungo button and we're just going to do the coffee side. So this is a little bigger drink. I've got to move that. I've got to put my bigger cup. And again, I'm just pressing the, the, the Lungo button. It is kind of loud, but it is pretty quick. That's about 170. So there's that shot. You can see it. It's kind of creamy, and then it kind of. Um, these taste really good. They're just a lot. I don't know how they're doing it, but it's just a lot more different than like a Keurig machine. Now these pods are typically run about 70 cents, um, where a Keurig pods usually run about 50 cents. So you are going to pay a little bit more, and the machines are a little bit more. But you can just see how that is just so much different. You've got some of that coffee uh, kind of foam at the top. So I've checked these for sediment. I've let them sit for a while and then poured them out. I don't see any sediment. I don't see any coffee grounds in the bottom of them. Um, the machine does a really good job with the, with the pod. So there I've got that Lungo. So say I wanted to add some milk, I could just come over here, even though it normally does the milk um, first. If I come over here and just press this button, and I can adjust the froth, say I want the froth about in the medium. It's gonna, it'll, it'll put some froth on top of there. And I would want to stop it. I would want to come up here. And, sorry about that. I'd want to stop it because then it's going to do the, another shot through that pod, which we don't want. So there we have the milk on top of the coffee. So we can add a little bit of syrup to that and you'd have a really nice latte. Okay, so since we ran some milk through this, I'm going to show you the clean function. It's a little tricky. I didn't quite understand it at first. Now you don't have to do anything. You're not going to press any of these buttons. It's just this button. It says clean. You're going to hold it down though until it kind of stops. So I'm going to press it, hold it, keep holding it. There. See how it kind of stops? Now I let the button up. Now this is nice, the nozzle is nice and clean. Now if I had more milk in here, which I, I, I can still take this out. The nice thing about this is I can put this in the refrigerator. That's a really nice feature. It says that they don't recommend leaving it in there more than a couple days. And definitely after three or four days, you're going to want to get the milk out. And if you leave it in, you're going to want to clean this out really well. But I could grab this out of the refrigerator, put it in, I'm ready to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna lift this up. Again, that pod's gonna go down in that storage container. I've got my new container down here. Let's make sort of a latte. I'm gonna use the bigger pod. This is gonna do the Lungo shot. So I put the pod in, close the handle. And then I wanna do, the, do froth milk and the espresso shot. So I'm gonna press, and I've got the bigger one in, so I'm gonna press the Lungo on this side. It's gonna do the milk, then this, I'm gonna adjust so let's say I want a lot of froth, a lot of froth in that button, but I need to add some more milk first. So you do have to take it out to add the milk. Well, I guess that's a, there's a release button. <laughs> I wonder why it was kind of hard. And we're just gonna add the milk. It's got a max line. Fill it up right out there. And then again, there's the, the frother. We're just going to put it on, and it does kind of snap. And then we just slide it in the tray. Everything's nice and lined up. You just put it on that little tray right there, and it just slides in until it clicks. 
Once it's in all the way, these buttons light up. Okay, I'm going to make sure the milk frother nozzle is pointed in there. And I'm going to press the Lungo button with the milk on the right side. Again, it's going to do the milk first. And the milk comes out really creamy. And they get the milk about 136. This this drink ends up being about 150, 160 when it's all said and done, which is a nice uh, hot drink. So there it's done, frothing the milk. So this makes about a 12 ounce drink. Put the shots in there and it's kind of going down. That's really cool. And then there you go. You can add your syrups or drink it just like that. These taste really good. So I'm really amazed at how much foam they're able to get. This is all foam. The shot, or the coffee, kind of melts in with the milk, but here you have your milk, you know, but man, they do get a lot of froth. So, I'm going to do one with it on, and that's with it on the, the high setting. I'm going to do one with it on the low setting. Got my pot, I'm going to put my pot in, I'm going to close the handle, I'm going to hit this button. Oh, that's not what I want to do, I want to do the, the big one. And again, I've got this switch on the small froth. So we'll compare the two and see how much uh, foam you get at the top. I can sort of tell already that it seems to be more creamy than froth than foam. So yeah, quite a bit less. So here we have the drinks side by side. Now this foam went down. This was the bigger foam. You know, it was up to about here. You do get quite a bit less foam with this one. So you get more of the rich creamy milk. I think you get the same amount of milk, just less, less of the foamy milk or the froth. And again, this, you know, these drinks are nice and hot. This one's cooled down a little bit, but they're normally around 150 degrees. So I've got a little bit of um, vanilla syrup. If you've got uh, caramel, you know, I'm going to make a, a vanilla uh, latte real quick here. Just about two tablespoons. One, two. Stir that in. Still left with a lot of froth and then I like to add a little whipped cream that's a really good taste in vanilla latte mmm that tastes delicious that might taste a little bit better than a Keurig machine just because of that coffee flavor is a little it's a little bit more like you get at Starbucks. So I'm going to do some more videos separate from this one on different types of drink. Cause that was a, that was a really good vanilla latte. I'm going to do a white chocolate mocha a latte and some different uh, cappuccinos. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do cleanup now. So cleanup is going to be a little tricky 
you know, granted you could just put this in the refrigerator and you'd be good to go. I'm going to show you how to take, there is quite a few things on this you can take apart. Up here, it's pretty much, you're going to open that, the pods are going to go down there. So I'm going to move my drink. I got this container, this, this thing comes out. There's where my pods are. I can throw, recycle those or throw them away. And then this is dishwasher safe. My little tray that came that comes out. I can wash that up. That's dishwasher safe. I can remove this tray. Now this tray does get some water, I've noticed. So just from you doing your brews, I think it's left over from the pods, but it does build up water in here. So you want to keep an eye on this and keep this cleaned. Otherwise that could get kind of moldy if you kind of forget about that. But it just slides in there and it does get some water from the brewing process. This one, this one, you, this one stays and you just got to clean it up here and then you can throw this in the dishwasher. So now let's talk about this. Again, there's a, there's a release, there's a release there. You're going to press that, that comes up. I'm going to put that milk in that espresso shot. So this container, you would want to uh, uh, use a brush on it sometimes, but this is dishwasher safe. This little tube just pulls out right here. And you'd want to clean that um, every so often. It's going to get, with milk, it's going to get some milk in there once in a while and use a little brush or just a bunch of hot water. Again, this thing comes out. Turn it to that position and it comes out. So to get this nozzle out, make sure it's not down because you got to pull it forward. So when it's up, you can pull it forward and then this nozzle comes out. This is all plastic. I would just wash this by hand. And then you're going to be able to kind of wash this whole thing, shoot water in everywhere. And then this turns and comes out. That's really nice. Yeah, you can really clean this thing pretty good. So the manual does say all of these are dishwasher safe, but like these are just so small, I'd probably just do these by hand. But you could maybe throw this in there, but still a lot of cavities. I would just wash this by hand here too. And then to put it back together, so you're going to start in the unlocked position and turn it up. So it kind of sticks out when it's out, and then as you turn it, it gets sucked in. The nozzle, it's got, a, it's got an O-ring. Make sure you got the O-ring on there still. You're just going to pop it in, and then it moves up and down. And then same with this. It's got an arrow. Start there, and as you turn it, it's going to suck down, and you can use it. And there you have it. Yeah, it's got another thing back here to make sure it's in. forgot the tube so when you got the tube all clean you just push the tube make sure it's pushed in all the way like that and you're gonna go so it's got a pretty decent sized uh, water reservoir I, I've made what four or five drinks and the, I still got about half my water reservoir it's got a nice lid on it the machine looks really nice um, the newer one, this looks a little different. It's kind of like a big round thing, but it, it almost looks identical to this other than how this nozzle is. So one last thing is this area where you put your drink. You know, these are pretty standard uh, coffee mugs. It does seem a little narrow to me. So I just want to measure it for you. So yeah, about three inches by three and a half. And you can only get about a five inch. Well, you got to... Considering the milk frother, maybe about a five and a half inch uh, cup. And then with the tray out, it gets even it gets even pretty small. So that that's kind of seems like a weak point because see I've got this one on there and it sticks off a little bit. But I haven't had a problem. It's it's pretty stable on there. So check out my other videos. I'm gonna do uh, several different videos on drinks, and I'm also gonna show you how to descale this in another video. So if you got any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down below. I check my comments on a daily basis. And thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.